In this video, I'm going to show you everything a professional photographer needs for nature photography. Starting off with the number one thing every photographer needs is the thing I literally never use. This guy. You know how many times I use a tripod for landscape photography? Never. Unless it has water in it, literally never use it. But it's good to have, especially if I do some videos. So, so before Shane picks me up, we're going out with Sergius and his girlfriend. Uh, try to get some bear photography today before he picks me up I just want to show you what my camera bag is mind shift backpack 36 L really really good bag I even burned it a long time ago funny story when I first got it I put it on my stove and uh, I was like what is that smell I was like this burning smell yep that's this hole here but it's held up for the years fits all my camera stuff my drones and everything one thing that I have in my backpack that I can't live without is this peak design clip it is really really good especially when i'm hiking and i'm only have my i have two cameras on me and i have to go hands free well i got a sling here for this big guy and then i just put the vlogging camera right on here look this clip is so good watch this look at this r5 with the 100 to 500 just hanging on the i mean i trust this thing completely it's pretty epic really good uh really good system definitely recommend for any nature photographer well as you can see there's a beautiful sunset behind me so while Sergius and Shane get some landscape photos and some bear photos there's a bear down the road here or down a little bit this way. I'm gonna get some drone shots before I lose this lighting. It is red, it's really nice. The one thing I love in Alaska is having a drone to get different perspectives. There's so much and oftentimes you get blocked by bushes and compositions can be limited depending on where you're at. And in the summertime here, just bushes just dominate everything. So I'm gonna take the drone off and uh, see what we can get. So this is basically your standard night in Kodiak, just bears chilling, beautiful sunset. I mean, I don't know what a non-normal day looks like. Alrighty, well, my next lens is probably my favorite lens in the collection. It is the lens that I use the most, especially for wildlife, the Canon RF 100-500. You would think that this is just a wildlife lens, but believe it or not, this is probably my second most used landscape lens next to the 24 to 70. There's just something magical about being able to just photograph simple subjects with this lens. It adds so much compression. It just makes a mountain look like a mountain and it's just beautiful. I don't know how to describe it, but it is wonderful. So a few hours ago, I actually stopped for a few minutes. I had about two or three minutes with the mom and three cubs out at Russian River and it was really, really beautiful. She was a gorgeous mom. I got one shot that I really liked and uh, you can see that right here. But yeah, this is just the all around great lens. And one thing that I love that I never thought I would love is a neck strap. And I don't wear it around my neck. Tuck it in like a sling and it just sits here. And if I really wanted to, I can kind of move it back here. But I really find it very comfortable like this. The one side going under the armpit. If I see something, I could just bring it up. It's ready to go, hands free. It's really, really convenient. It distributes the weight around my body really nice. So highly recommend using a neck strap for heavier lenses like this. Really comes in handy. And you don't have to put it around your neck. Sling it like this. And you know, one other advantage with having a lens like this is if your eyes can see it, not only will it be a better product of what your eyes can see, but it'll just capture a detail like your eyes can't see. And it's a good combination of everything. And you know, if you find something like 
this is out of your price range, highly recommend a Sigma 150 to 600. It's about half the price or even a third of the price depending on which model you get. I used a contemporary lens and it was like 900 bucks a couple years ago. So it might be cheaper, it might be more expensive. Times have changed quite a bit, but it definitely captured a lot of great, great moments for me and very usable stuff for professional circumstance. If you think 500 millimeters or 600 millimeters is a little too zoomed in for you, let me show you the lens that every photographer should have. 7 to 200, 2.8. Now, most companies do make an F4 version and let's walk and talk about that as well. Well, my wife and dogs are up over there, so we're gonna go meet up with them. And uh, we'll talk about this 7200. This is the Canon version three, 2.8. Really, really high quality lens. Just amazing. When I first got it, it was basically the only lens that I used, but I'll be honest, when I got the 100 to 500, this kind of slipped to the back burner. And simply because it's so much easier to just keep one lens on, I lose about 30 millimeters and the 2.8. But the 2.8 is not necessarily something you really need. And I think there's a lot of misconception about it. It's good if you want the compression of things. And if you can afford the 2.8 version, definitely get it because you never know when you need the low light performance. F4 version is just as good. It can produce really good images and it's about 800 bucks cheaper or a thousand bucks cheaper depending on where you get it from. So either one is a good option, especially if you're in the landscapes, you really don't need the F2.8 too much unless you're gonna do some crazy focus stacking. Hey guys, they don't even care. They don't even care that I'm here. But I'll be honest, this, at one point this was my most used lens. Now it's my least used lens, but it always stays in the bag. One day I would love to be in a scenario where I know I'm gonna have wildlife within a few feet of me. And I would love to try this lens on there because there's some moments where I've been actually a little too close to uh, certain animals. Not bears, no way, no freaking way. I'm going to let her come up. She will bluff. I've done this two or three times with her. So if you guys make sure to shoot down the barrel right at her, she's going to come in about another five steps and she's going to bounce at me. Okay. Be ready for it. Okay. See? Man, these flies are eating me up. All right. I'm standing over Woman's Bay. I got Bell's Flats over here, the Coast Guard Base this way, and a really, really cool place. Obviously, you can't see them, but there's probably like 50 bears in my direction that I'm looking. It's pretty cool to think about. They always say that Kodiak Island, you're never more than a certain amount of feet away from bears or something. There's always a certain amount of bears within a mile of you, I don't know. Back to this uh, 100 to 500 lens, I do use it with the Canon R5. I really love the 45 megapixels for wildlife, but me megapixels is not the only thing that really matters. So don't let the camera body deter you away from getting something you like. I say definitely put your money in the lenses over the camera body. But if you wanna be somewhat professional, then invest in a good camera body as well. And having a good camera body helps me with wildlife because most of the time I could just hold the one button, it tracks the animal eye really well, and I could just focus on a composition. So it definitely helps. This is the 24 to 70 by Sigma. It uh, is an EF lens, so it adapts to my RF camera with an adapter and it works seamless so I don't have a reason to upgrade at all. Um, it's really, really nice lens. It comes with a lens hood and uh, just absolutely amazing for landscape. So occasionally when I hike, I know me hiking, I'm not hiking enough. A lot of times I'll just bring this lens on the Canon R6 that I'm recording with and I'll use that as my landscape lens, vlogging lens, and I get some detail shots with that and whatnot. And I'll keep the drone in the bag for a different perspective. And that's it. I'm tired of hiking with a big camera bag and all this heavy gear. It's usually not worth it. I'm too tired to switch lenses. So I found a really good system. And this is just a, like a lens that uh, every nature photographer should really have on them. Not only can you capture nature, landscapes and whatnot, but I also use this for Milky Way or Northern Lights. A 24 millimeters is somewhat kind of wide, but not too uh, zoomed in. So I do appreciate a good uh, 
24 millimeter lens for Milky Way photography. And in a pinch, if I forgot my 15 to 35 lens, I can vlog with this lens. It'll be a little tight, but it is definitely doable. All right, well, I actually started recording this video about two or three weeks ago in Homer. So I'm gonna send you to Homer right now, and I'm gonna talk about my vlogging lens and microphone and uh, whatnot. All right, so while we wait for our ferry to Homer or from Homer to Kodiak later on tonight, we're at the Homer Overlook here. Really, really pretty spot. And I figured what a great time to show you what my vlogging camera is. We got the Canon R6 with the RF 15 to 35 on, Deity D4 Duo as the mic, and uh, got this PGY Tech Manus tripod. I didn't think I would like it, but uh, I do like it a lot. Our backup mic is this Rode Wireless Go 2. And I also just picked up in Anchorage this uh, hand grip. So when I'm hiking with my other camera that I'm recording with, I can have one in one hand, drop it, shoot some wildlife, good to go. I really do like this R6 for vlogging. It's nice and light, and so is the RF. 15 to 35. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Tell me what your next lens is gonna be for your nature photography. If you have another suggestion under Canon, let me know. If you wanna try out one of these lenses, camera bodies, or even a drone, I do have a coupon code for you at lensrentals.com. Use code Chris15, link is in the description, and it does help me out slightly, so definitely use the link that's in the description. Little disclaimer for you. But Lens Rentals is great, offers a lot of variety and stuff, and you really get a chance to try gear before you buy it. If you wanna learn more about the Mavic 3, click this video right here, and I have a review for you to watch. If you like this video, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more of my Alaska journey and my Alaska life. I'll catch you guys in the next one.